Welcome back to Phoenix Haven Garage, everyone. Today we're continuing on with the brake system on our uh, 2012 uh, BMW Z4 35iS. Uh, in the previous video, we painted the brake calipers and got the car up off the floor. You can find a link to that video in the description where I show how to get the car onto jack stands easily and get everything cleaned up and painted and prepped before we do the brakes, which we're going to do right now. So uh, before we get started, let's go check out the parts we're going to use. So I ordered slotted and drilled rotors, fronts and rears. Uh, here they are. You can see the part numbers here for the front. Uh, right there, one's going to have an R, one's going to have an L for left and right. Uh, same for the rears right here, here's the part numbers. Again, this one's the L, but it's going to be the same part number for either side. And some other things you're going to need to do this. We're going to need some uh, brake clean spray to clean off the rotors. Uh, I am using a code scanner one made for the car or compatible with the car to, uh, to release the emergency parking brake system in the back to do the rears. There is a way to manually do this without the, the scanner though. Uh, the brake kits here, it came with, I bought came with the rotors, it came with ceramic pads, and it came with the uh, uh, caliper reboot uh, boot kit here. Uh, looks like there's a tensioner, metal tensioners in there, as well as shims for the rear pads. I then went to the auto store. Uh, I picked up some uh, brake lubricant for the back of the pads. Uh, even though these are shimmed on the back, you see the little plate here, I still find they squeak and putting a little bit of this lube on will, present, will stop it from sounding like a bus every time it stops as well. Uh, I also grabbed this handy dandy little uh, tool here. You put a, a socket wrench into it and it's gonna lock into the caliper pistons and we're gonna be able to turn them and push them back into the, uh, the caliper housing. At least for the rears, I believe, I think the front, I might have to use the old style uh, C-clamp, but we'll see when we get there. Uh, I think that's mainly it for parts. So what I like to do up front, since we already have the car in this state, is I'm gonna prep all the parts here now. So the first thing I like to do is clean the rotors off. They have a film on them to protect them from corrosion, to protect them from rusting. Uh, I'm gonna hit it with some of the brake clean here front and back and I just have a shop rag uh, I'll try to use something that's lint free it's okay if you get lint on it. it's just gonna burn off when you stop the first time and just wipe off the rotors get all that film off them front and back do that for all four rotors so I've gone ahead and prepped the, the the pads So on the front I applied it to all the entire back surface because the, the pads are totally hidden by the caliper but in the back, though, the caliper comes down like two fingers along the edge, and you can kind of see the center. So I didn't want to put any in the center because I didn't want to see blue next to the, the red paint I have. And I can always try and clean it up a little bit once I get everything installed. But as you see, I'm just kind of going around the outside. I put a little bit on a piece of cardboard here, and you just apply it like so. Sorry, my hand's blocking the entire shot, but something like that. So now let's go plug in our scan tool and set up the rear brake system so we can begin dismantling. Everything. All right, I'm gonna try and do this with only two hands. I need like four. Uh, looks like we can see the screen now. So from here, I got the car turned on onto X run mode. I had to hit the start button twice. I plugged in the scanner, I met with the screen, and I'm gonna go down to emergency parking brake reset. I'm gonna hit okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, workshop mode the parking brake must be set to the installation position before replacing the rear brake pads do you wish to replace the pads now okay yes set vehicle as follows secure vehicle to prevent it rolling they ain't gonna roll it's on all four jack stands the brake must not be applied instead it must be released the two rear actuator motors are now in the installation position. I can hear them turning. The brake pads can now be replaced. Okay, we should be good. I believe when we're all done, all we're gonna do is, uh, once everything's back together, I'm gonna turn the parking brakes on and off a few times with the switch there, and that should readjust them at the end of all this. So, all right, I got the passenger side done, and we're gonna go film the driver's side now. I'm gonna show you how to do it. You're gonna need an 18 millimeter uh, wrench to get the caliper mounting bracket off 
You're going to need a 6 millimeter Allen to get that nut off the rotor, and you're going to need a 7 millimeter Allen to get the caliper off the mounting bracket. Let's go do it. First thing you want to do is pop your hood and remove the top of the brake fluid reservoir. When I was painting in the other video, I went ahead, hit these with some penetrating loop here. It's a 6 millimeter Allen, and... I've already broken them loose. Mine were really loose, it wasn't that big of a deal. Try not to strip it out. You're gonna have a bad day if you strip those out. You can see, these will come right out from mine. This is holding the rotor on to the spindle. Uh, the rotors are heavy. These front ones are very heavy. The new ones I bought are even heavier. They are, it was really difficult trying to, to put these on over there, but uh, We'll see how this goes over here. Okay, we have to get this plate off to get to the to get this unmounted. What I found worked was took a screwdriver and just kind of popped it up like that. You see, and there it goes. It's going to go on the same way, but it's a lot harder to get it back on. So once that's free and in front, you can grab a pair of pliers and just pull this out. I have new ones with my kit, but and they look nice. Alright, so now we can see what we're looking at here. What's happening is, if you can see in the picture, the, the caliper mounting bracket is actually over the, the caliper itself. This is all the caliper here. This is the mounting bracket, and right here, it, you won't be able to pull the caliper off. What I had to do is, we're going to loosen the caliper mounting pins with a 17 millimeter Allen, right behind them is a dust cover. You can use a screwdriver or your nail. You're going to pop off this dust cover so that we can put the 7 millimeter Allen in there and loosen the pins. Once we back the pins out, I'm going to take a screwdriver and come into the top here and just work the threads of the pin until I can pull it all the way out on both of these. I'm going to try and show you what it looks like from on top here. Not a lot of light. But there'll be two, there's one on top here, there's a, a, a plastic rubber sleeve that that goes in, and there's one right below it on the bottom. You're probably going to have to lay down and come in from the bottom to get it out and work it with the screwdriver the same way. Alright, so I've worked the pin out of the bottom, and now i got the one out of the top. These are what I'm talking about. And you want to look at the pin here, there's a lot of uh, dirt and corrosion on it. Uh, threads look really good though still. We're going to clean these up and I'm going to lube them with the same lube we use on the brake pads. Top and bottom. Keep them in the same order. They, make sure you keep those in the, the same order so when you put them back in you're going to put them in the same spots. Now over here there is a, a brake pad monitor right here. Uh, where here and it should just pull out. So that's on there pretty good because it's sandwiched between the pad and the rotor I think. So once I loosen this up, I should be able to pull this out a lot easier. It's, it's fighting too hard, and it shouldn't be like that. In the back here, it's clamped. It's just on a little plastic uh, loop that holds it, the wire onto everything. And I'm going to take that off because when I move this, I don't want this getting all messed up. So the next thing to do now is with those pins out is to take the 18 millimeter. Because you can't move the, the caliper at all because of the, the the piston in the back's fully extended, so we're going to take the whole assembly off and then we'll be able to take the caliper off the mounting bracket and hang it. So I have an old coat hanger here that I've bent, and what I usually do is I hang it up on the suspension here, like that, and then I'll hang the caliper from right here and it will be okay. So I'm going to use the 18 millimeter now and break free the caliper mounting bolts. They're pretty big. The other ones, it is, I can't get a light on it, but it's, it's right here. There's one on top and one on the bottom. All right. There's both 18 millimeter bolts removed. This whole thing will come off now with some persuasion. There we go. And now... I can get the mounting bracket out carefully. We're going to remove this brake sensor. I still can't get that thing off. Hmm. Right, we're going to hang this first. Right here, I already have the. All 
Okay, so now we have it hanging. We can uh, take this front pad out. There goes the top one. And now the bottom one, we can see the sensor there. I'm gonna pull it off. And now I think I can get this, just finally get the sensor off. So if you're lucky, the rotor stayed on because the, the rotor is just kind of floating here at the moment. You can see, I'm able to turn it. So we're gonna have to hit the rotor. Because we're changing the rotor, I can smack the hell out of this. If you gotta reuse your rotor, if you're just doing your pads, you gotta be very gentle with getting this off. But I don't have to do that. So. There it goes. Just like that. So the first thing I wanna do is prep the spindle here. You see it's corroded. I'm up in the northeast and everything just rusts. That's good. I'm gonna rag, wipe it down. Now, one thing that could help with the rotor coming off is putting some uh, never seize around the area here where it mounted. Uh, that will help it come off easier next time and stop it from rusting to the, the spindle and then you got a whole nightmare. Uh, I do have, if you can't get yours off, I'll have a link in the description to a video I have where I use uh, a bolt and two nuts here. You can mount a bolt here on th this here and drive the bolt forward to the back of the rotor and push the rotor off. I show how to do that in the video. If you can't hit it with a hammer and it's not coming off, uh, if you just don't have any luck with it, that will definitely get it off. That will uh, apply more force than you would ever be with a hammer and it will pop that rotor right off the spindle for you. I almost always have to do that with the trucks brakes when I do them. So now that area is prepped and we can put the rotor on, but first I'm going to drive the piston back in. Uh, I thought I could use the other, a nice uh, brake piston squeeze to do that, but it turned out I had to use the, the old school C-clamp. I didn't have a tool that can go through the hole here and uh, compress the piston all the way. So I, uh, we're going to put a C-clamp on the back. And here's that. Once you get it where it needs to be, once you get it all the way down, it won't go any further. It, it goes dead solid. That's it. We're done. Back it off. Oh. There we go. These rotors weigh a metric ton. Uh, I got a, one of the lug bolts in my hand. And I'm lining up the rotor screw hole with the top. But it's easier to get a lug on there if you're doing this by yourself first. All right, that will help hold this in place just a little bit because it weighs so much. This is the uh, rotor screw to, to hold it. Uh, I put a little bit of uh, never seize there, any seize on the end of it because you want that to come off next time. You don't want that to strip. Remember the rotors are marked left and right. Driver's side is left, passenger side is right. All right, that's on there. I'm not gonna go real tight, that's it. Just a little bit on there, that's all we need. All right, so this is the caliper mounting bracket here. And it's on the car like this, as we were looking at it. The brake pads ride on this surface here. These in the channel and on the top there. So I got the wire brush again, and we're just gonna go ahead and clean all that up. I have some alcohol on a paper towel here. I'm just cleaning that up some more. Now again, to help things slide and move, I got some more anti-seize here. And I'm just gonna put a little bit in the channel. Both sides. Help them slide along. You don't want the pad to freeze because then you'll get uneven wear. One pad will be wiped out and the other pad will be like brand new. All right, so now I'll reassemble this with the 18 millimeter bolts back on behind the rotor just by itself. All right, so I got the brake pad with the prongs on it. They're going to go into the, the piston over there. And on the other side, I had to give these a little bit of a pinch to get these to go in. Looks like that a little bit just to help it along. So now I'm gonna put this into the caliper like this and push it in. 
Perfect. Going right in. We are now going to reinstall the brake pad wear monitor. The, the fat side with the nipple, as you see, is going to go facing you. So the thin side is towards the piston. And it's just going to go clip right onto the back of the brake pad. I know you can't see it, but there's a slot there. You'll see it on the brake pad when you get your brake pads. And that is now installed. So these are my caliper pins. And they're not too bad. There's no pits in them, really, a couple scratches, but they're in pretty good condition. They don't need to be replaced. Uh, so I'm just cleaning them off so that they'll, they'll slide. And what we're going to do is take some of that blue uh, brake grease that we got, brake lubricant, right here, just as we put on the back of the pads. And I'm going to put a little bit on near the bottom, the threaded end, and just move that around the whole pin. And then as I insert this into the, and then as I insert this, it will spread down the entire length of the pin and cover everything. So when I put this in, I'm going to put it in through the back and you'll see it come through. I don't know if it's on camera. It's going to come out right here behind the brake pad, but I don't want that. I'm going to put my finger in and I'm going to stop it so it's not protruding at all. You see that, how it's sticking out? I'm just going to push it back so you can't see it. It will just stay in, it will just hold in place like that. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom one now. All right, now, if I did this all correctly, with any luck, this will now assemble. I have the other pad here. I'm just going to lay it right here, mount it, just like that. We're going to take this off our coat hanger. Bring this down. There we go. With your seven millimeter Allen now, you're gonna push the pins through now, and then you can start driving them and locking them to the mount. To do the caliper pins to about, I don't know, 15 foot pounds, 20 foot pounds, you don't wanna go crazy on them. The 18 millimeter bolts, I left them a little loose so I can get everything else on. Now I'm gonna really tighten them down. Put some blue thread locker on those as well. But uh, just these you wanna hulk down. I don't know what the torque spec is, but I always go uh, really hard on these bolts. Uh, you don't want these coming off. And now that everything tightened, you can put your uh, caliper pin dust covers back on. They just pop right back on. Two. Let's take care of our wear pad wear wire here. I'm going to reconnect this everywhere. Right. So the only way I found to get this guy on was you're going to insert the two uh, tabs here underneath the parts of the carrier here. Like so. It's a little bit of a dance. There it is. And now holding it, I can push the bottom in. And I think I got it. Give it a couple taps. Make sure everything's seated. Yeah, looks good. So there we go. There's the driver's side all done. Don't forget to remove your coat hanger from the top if you used one. Perfect. Looks like this, uh, this shock needs to be done. It's got a lot of uh, leakage there, so I'll have to see if I get the struts done maybe. But we're going on to the rear brakes now. All right, so I just finished the passenger side rear. Uh, the passenger side rear has the brake pad sensor on it. It's just like how you did on the front, uh, but there's a little spring clip inside the rear brake pad. When you pull this sensor out, pull out the little spring, and then when you go to reassemble everything, put the little spring clip onto the sensor on the wire and then put everything into the brake pad. Now let's go do it on the other side without that wire. All right, so the first thing to do over here on the back is to remove the uh, parking brake motor here. Um, you're just gonna get the clip up a little bit, just like that, and then just push it off. There it goes. It's also just fed into a holder in the back. It will just pull out of that holder 
once you get it at the, the correct angle, I'm gonna leave it there for now, it's fine. Uh, now, to break the caliper free, you're gonna use a 13 millimeter on the nut, on the bolt on the back, and you're gonna use a 15 millimeter on the nut. Uh, I had problems getting the 15 millimeter on while I was taking the other side apart, but putting the other side back together, it was not an issue. Maybe I had a different wrench. Let's see if the 15 fits over here now. Yeah, I got on. Good. So then you can break this free now. And these shouldn't be that tight. Perfect. This is just holding the rubber boot here. All my rubber boots are fine. Uh, when we get this off on the bench, I'll show you what I'm talking about. You can look at the, spring, uh, the, the pins in there and the grease, just like the front. It's just a little bit different looking, but it's... If you've done brake jobs before, it's nothing new. It's the same old stuff they've been using for the past 40, 50 years. All right, that's there. Check in on that, there we go. And again, so top and bottom. Now these, the boot, a little spring it's a kind of acts as a spring and it's going to put a little tension there so what you do is <clears throat> you pull the boot back a little bit like that then you just pop the caliper out you gotta do the same thing when you're reinstalling you're going to have to push the boots down and put the caliper on and now everything's in the way of everything else as you just try to flip this straight up and up where the motor's catching on something over here there you go. It pulls right out. Uh, the, the brake line is very short. There's not really anywhere to put this. What I did was, I still used my hanger, but I hung it from the exhaust in the back. The, the dual exhaust is right here, the pipe. And I'm able to get the top of the hanger on that exhaust there. Okay, we're good. Now you gotta use a 16 millimeter to get the uh, caliper mounting bracket off in the back two bolts again. You're gonna to wanna to use a wrench. I had to use a 16 millimeter socket because 16 millimeter is a pretty uncommon wrench, I think. Um, but I was able to do it. it. It sucked doing it though. So these will just pull right off, as you see. If, if this had the, uh, the, the brake pad sensor here, you would just pull this off of that clip I talked about and then just pull this back like that. There goes the bracket. All right, let's go over to the bench. So there's a lot of grease on the bracket here from when they did the rear brakes before I bought the car. Um, I'm going to get these pieces off here and try not to uh, disturb a lot of the grease. Yeah, you see it all just flew off. It's everywhere. It makes a big mess. All right. So uh, I would usually, I do this on the other side. I clean this up again with the wire brush, but now I got grease all on my wire brush. So uh, I didn't get a chance to clean that out yet. So I'm just gonna use some rags and try and wipe a lot of this off. Man, it's all over the place. Now with that a little bit cleaner, I'm gonna take some anti-seize here. And I'm just gonna put this back in place where it was with the other grease they had, but not as much. Just a nice little coating on it. Go. And again, that's just to make the shims easier to get off the next time you do the brakes. If you even have the car that long. The rear brakes don't usually need to be changed that often. There we go. Okay. Now we grab two of our shims from the brake kit. And we're just going to push these on. The, the slot side goes towards the, the surface. Just like that. There we go. That's it. And now we push this one on as well. Uh, that's it. So let's check out the, the boots here in good condition. They're just disgusting from all the grease again. They look like they're in good condition. I don't see any rips or tears. You can hold the boot here like this and pull the pin out like that. And you see, it looks really good and clean. Not that bad. So what you do is you just clean them up. 
You can re-lubricate them. I'm going to use the blue stuff that we bought just like before. And there's a ton uh, checking inside in there. You can go through, you can clean it all out. Mine aren't that bad, I'm not really so worried about it, but because I wiped the grease off the one here, I'm going to add a little more to it again. But inspect both pins. Make sure everything in there is nice. There's no pits or cracking or rust or anything. It should be nice and smooth. That, um, put your, put it down towards the, the tip end. There you go. And just hold the boot and just kind of turn it as you insert it. And it should just pop on just like that. And it should be springy. Perfect. All right, so for the rotor again, we're gonna need our six millimeter Allen. There we go. So I already took these off or loosened them up last night. And goes that. And now we take this off. And uh, the surface here, I'm not going to prep it because they already did when they did it. All this bronze stuff is the anti seize you see. So this is already prepped really nice. And I'm not going to get my clean gloves all dirty again. So I'm going to take this rotor over and grab the new one. At least the rear ones are a little bit lighter than the front. There we go. And again, do not do this tight. Just enough to hold it on there. Because the next time you come in, you want to make sure that this comes off. That's it. Take off the lug. Check the heat shield here. It's a little bent. Pull that back a little bit. Over here too. So now grab your 16 millimeter bolts. You can put some blue thread locker on them. And then reassemble here, line it up. Now, as I talked about before, you're going to want to compress these as you uh, remount the caliper. Here. Ugh. There we go. Oh, I forgot the brakes. So, the shorty one goes in the front. I'm going to do it one-handed here, holding the caliper. There we go. One that goes in the rear has the extra spot for the clip that would go in that you do on the other side. There we go. So what I forgot to do here real quick was push in the, the piston. I'm gonna do that now. Uh, this thing was garbage. This didn't work here. It needs like a triangle setting. But I found out because I already had the parking brake um, electronically disabled from the computer. I was able to use a traditional style of screw-in to push this piston in. I didn't have to turn the piston or rotate it to get it to collapse. So we'll put this in place here. I know you can't see a lot of what's going on because it's all blocked by the piston, but I'm just going to very slowly compress the piston. All right, it's pretty tight. Take this off now. And now we can put the caliper on. The hardest part is just getting that parking brake motor out of your way. Get it to line up. There it goes. And push that in. There it goes. It took a little bit of fiddling, but it's on. Okay. And now re-screw in your 13 millimeter bolts. All right. Here we go. They don't have to go really tight in these. Maybe 15, 20 foot pounds. That feels good. There we go. Plug in your uh, motor and then also make sure to reconnect the cable in the back to it. Again, don't forget your coat hanger. Be sure to get that out of there. <laughs> so here's the car. It's all done. Got the calipers on, got the rotors on, all four corners. Everything should be good. Everything's nice and tight. Everything's clean. I hit a little bit more of the red spray paint everywhere from my where I got things a little dirty or whatever, but uh, looks really good. So I got about another 40 minutes now of getting tires on and getting the car back on the ground. Then we'll come back and uh, test the system out. Before we get to all that though, make sure to put the cap back on your brake fluid reservoir. Once that's on nice and tight, you can close your hood. And now put all your wheels and tires back on, torque them down to 100 foot-pounds, 
don't go over 100 foot pounds and make the next time you try to get that wheel off a nightmare. I'm gonna just put my foot on the brake and start the car. It's in park still. And now I'm gonna pump the brakes. It went to the floor, comes up. Oh, getting harder. To the floor, no, not to the floor, but halfway. And now it feels like I have brakes. Feels good. Well, car's moving fine. Stopping really good. Put the car in park. Oh, there it goes. Okay, I heard them. They actually actually waited. So I had to move the car first, put it back in park, hit the park and brake. I heard the motors go, lights on. I got a red park on the dash. And now I'm gonna push it down. I hear them actuating and they're off. It's good. I'm gonna do it again. They're on, I hear them go. And they're off. And with that, I think we are off. So just do normal controlled stops. The first time you you do this, you don't wanna go slamming the brakes. That's not how this works. So I got the car going about I don't know, five miles an hour here. I'm just gonna stop the car. Everything's stopping good. I think it's a little bit faster now. We're up to about 10, 15. All right, there's 20, and I'm stopping the car. It's perfectly quiet. Steering wheel didn't turn. It's gonna be a nice control stop. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. Sorry for the dirty car, but uh, I wanted to breeze, at least bring it out in the sun and show it off. I have to give it a bath now, but uh, the brakes, the rotors, the calipers, they look awesome. They function great. Uh, everything went really smooth. So next up for the car is the catalytic converters and getting these awful wheels refurbished. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this helps you with your brake job. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Please give a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and take care everyone.